Alright guys, so we have big updates today. The Federal Reserve will save the economy even if inflation gets out of control. Jerome Powell has admitted it and we must talk about this insanity. There are a ton of signs that the US economy isn't doing very well. Behind the crazy jobs reports, we have endless revisions down. Higher prices are still stickier than ever, which tells us rates should be staying higher for longer. Inflation in the US isn't moving at all. CPI is stuck at 3.2%, while core inflation is at 3.8%. That's almost double the Fed's target of 2%. Consumers are still paying more for less. They are getting financially clobbered. Ask anyone and they'll tell you real wages just aren't keeping up. The numbers show 4% inflation, but in reality, it feels like double. And when was the last time you enjoyed a wage hike in real terms? The housing situation is just as bad. Home sales have collapsed by 19% last year bringing it down to the lowest levels in 30 years. People aren't selling their homes because the mortgage rate is still extremely high. Mortgages are still at 7% today. That's more than double the rate since 2021. Those that have to refinance are screwed and buying a new house today is crazy. And that's why rents aren't coming down and people are getting squeezed even further. Consumers and business delinquencies are going up because there simply isn't enough money to go around. And if you throw in other disasters like commercial real estate, you know the Fed has to cut interest rates sooner or later and it's obvious that Bidenomics has failed. As a result, the Fed is struggling between fighting inflation and saving the economy. During the recent Fed meeting, the FOMC showed their hand. There should be three rate cuts coming this year and it's going to bring interest rates down to 4.75%. The Fed knows that inflation isn't going away, so they are tiptoeing around the issue. We aren't going back to 2% anytime soon. They will likely revise the neutral rate higher because they have no choice. It is important we understand this struggle. The Fed isn't cutting interest rates because the economy is so strong. They are cutting because the economy is fundamentally weak. And this is where we need to step back from the narrative Biden is trying to sell us. Almost every time the Fed cuts rates, it heralds the start of a recession. And those are the grey bars you see here. It happened back in 2020, 2008, and of course, the 1980s after Volcker cut rates down to earth. And this should really freak us out. Because if the economy is so robust today, the Fed should be staying at 5.5% forever. The fact that they can't means power will be cutting into weakness. And it's not just me saying this. A group of leading economists, including three Fed officials, wrote a shocking report. And it paints a bleak picture of what's to come when the Fed starts slashing rates. There's no post-1950 precedent for a sizable central bank-induced disinflation that does not entail substantial economic sacrifice or recession. And let me translate that for you. It's a lot of words. When the Fed cuts rates, history tells us there'll be either massive unemployment or an economic recession. In essence, the report tells us there's no escape. Pain is coming. And this is coming from the brightest minds across the US from the private and public sectors, including people from the Federal Reserve. But what's shocking is Powell's latest admission that supporting the US economy is the number one priority, not fighting inflation, but keeping the economy propped up so that Joe Biden looks rather good in November. Fed's Powell ready to support job market, even if it means lingering inflation. If the economy suddenly weakens, Powell is going to save America at the cost of inflation. Now, this is terrible news and it tells us that the Fed isn't serious about fighting inflation at all. And let's recall the Fed's dual mandate. It's about fighting higher prices while ensuring maximum employment. And what we are facing today is rising unemployment in the US. Obviously, it will torpedo the Biden campaign. If it happens before the elections, power will step in and slam rates down. Despite the crazy jobs numbers, unemployment is slowly creeping back up across the US. It is back to a two-year high of 3.9%. Cracks are already starting to show across the board. You have higher rates hitting the economy and consumer growth starting to slow. The big issue here is rates staying higher for longer, which is going to crush companies even further. The Atlanta Fed now sees only one rate cut in 2024. And that means the Fed funds could be well above 5% by the end of December. And what Bostick just said is very concerning. He's less confident on the trajectory of inflation and underneath the headline figures, prices are still persistently high. And we have said before that the Fed will never reach the 2% target. It is impossible when supply-side inflation is the enemy. The Fed keeping rates high is going to crush demand on both the consumer side 
which would then trickle down to businesses as well. One big metric we must pay attention to is consumer credit card debt. According to the Federal Reserve, 8.5% of credit card balances and 7.7% of auto loans are in delinquencies. And this is a horrific report. Consumers just don't have the money to pay their bills and they are on the run. This is going to impact retail sales and the bottom line for companies. It's the classic snowball effect that will cascade down, denying a ton of revenue to businesses. And because of high interest rates plus high inflation, credit card debt has exploded. Households have added $150 billion in debt in a single year. That is the highest rate of borrowing before the 08 crash and the 2020 collapse. This is a ton of money that needs to be repaid, which will take away additional spending in the future. Economic growth is driven by spending and when you take away the punch bowl, companies will feel the pain. And besides GDP, another indicator that signals recession is the sum rule. According to this rule, when the unemployment rate is half a percent or more versus its low in the past 12 months, the economy is in recession. Unemployment has rebounded up to 3.9%. And if it continues to stay there or goes higher, the economy will be in trouble. The sum rule measures what people are feeling on the ground. As fiscal spending stays high, it kind of clouds the GDP figures. So the rule helps to give us a clearer picture of the economy. And things aren't looking good. 20 states in the US are flashing warning signs. They have triggered the sum rule which indicates a recession. So 40% of the US is in recession from unemployment alone. If this figure continues to hit higher and higher, power might aggressively cut rates to rescue the economy. So it's very important to understand the risk of what rate cuts will mean this time. One to three rate cuts is the Fed's expectation. That's the flight path. But if unemployment hits higher, the Fed will deviate. Powell already said that he would. The Fed won't wait for inflation to hit 2%, which is very scary. They will slam on the brakes there and then. And this means we could have a big correction down while inflation stays high. And because rates will suddenly collapse fast when the Fed steps in, a ton of money in short-term bonds could move out in a hurry. There's over $6 trillion stuck in money market funds. That's liquidity hiding in bonds paying out 5.5%. People are putting their money there because the return is incredibly high for zero risk. What happens when power slams rates down to save the economy? If it's aggressive enough, the money could flow back into the market. Now, some for sure could run into long-term bonds, but it could also flow back into the stock market as well. So don't expect this collapse to last for long. Collapsing rates with high inflation is a recipe for disaster. Asset prices could rebound rather quickly. The Fed is going to keep unemployment down even at the cost of inflation. 2% inflation, as we said before, is going to be a myth. The wealth gap between the rich and the poor is going to widen even further and further. And speaking of disaster, let's do an update on Japan because things are really crazy now. A week ago, they made a historic decision and hike rates and normally, this would be good for the currency. When you hike interest rates, the yen should strengthen against the dollar, but it collapsed instead. The yen today is at its weakest point since 1990 and this is horrific for people on the ground. Japan imports a ton of raw materials and commodities, and this includes food, electronics, and energy. And if the yen keeps collapsing, inflation on the ground is going to spike up. People's buying power is going to collapse. Now, inflation is re-accelerating again. We can see this big rebound up in the CPI. Consumer prices have bounced up from 2% all the way to 2.8, which is the quickest pace since 2022. This is important because the BOJ is now effectively trapped. They can't raise rates much higher without crashing the economy or collapsing their national debt. But they must still defend the yen or inflation will surge out of control. Wages might be going up, but if prices keep rising, then consumer spending isn't going to explode. The virtuous cycle the Bank of Japan keeps talking about isn't going to manifest. They are trapped and they know it. They can't hike further to save the yen. So the only road left is for currency intervention. Japan is going to start dumping US dollars to put out the fire. That's the most likely route going forward. Japan's currency chief is warning against speculative moves in the market. He's telling people not to bet against the yen, which is a dangerous signal that the BOJ is going to step in. The yen is now above the October 2020 intervention mark. And if we combine this with other earlier facts, the BOJ is in serious trouble. They need to defend their currency. The Fed isn't going to cut rates unless the US economy collapses or unemployment shoots up, we know that. It's going to hover around 1-3 to three cuts at the most. This leaves the interest rate differential between the US and Japan still ridiculously high. 
The BOJ is starting to freak out and the first step is to jawbone the markets. They are trying to scold speculators away to strengthen the yen, but that's not going to work, it's not enough. The current weakening of the yen is not in line with the fundamentals and is clearly driven by speculation. Now, I disagree with this. The weakening of the yen is in line with market fundamentals. It's Japan that is delusional. But the next sentence is extremely dangerous. We will take appropriate action against excessive fluctuations without ruling out any options. In other words, a currency intervention is coming if the yen keeps collapsing. And it's important to take this seriously. Japan's planning to dump a ton of US dollars to protect the yen. So if you're speculating for the yen to crash even further, you might want to be very careful about this bet. The yen is now at intervention levels. The currency has collapsed well above 150 to the dollar. Back in September and October 2022, the Bank of Japan sold a ton of dollars to prop up the yen. In one single day, they dumped $4 billion to strengthen their local currency. Now in the long term, it didn't help to save the yen from collapse. It still weakened all the way back up to current levels, back above 150 again. But speculators got slaughtered in the short term. The yen strengthened by over 10%, which is enough to wipe traders out, especially if you are trading on leverage. The magnitude of this dump could be enormous now. Back in October 2022, Japan spent a record $43 billion to save the yen. They sold a ton of dollars in the market to buy up their local currency. And this could very well happen again except Japan needs even more money to support the yen. There are a lot of investors betting against the Japanese yen. They are hoping for it to collapse even further. The amount of short bets have hit nearly 80,000 contracts. That's the same level as November 2022 levels just before the yen strengthened. A ton of speculators got destroyed in the following months. So if you're thinking of shorting the yen, the risk to reward ratio just isn't there. The BOJ can't wait for the Fed to cut rates. If power just cuts one, two, or three times, it won't change a thing for the Japanese yen. Now, does this mean the US dollar will collapse if the BOJ sells the dollars to prop up the yen? Will it trigger a global dollar dump? Now, I think this is a dangerous assumption to make this time. The real victim of the move is Japan's reserves. It won't collapse the dollar just yet. Even under the most optimistic forecast, US interest rates will only come down to 4.5%. That's a generous estimate. US rates are still some of the highest in the world if rates do drop that far. And we must consider the facts here. The USD is still the world reserve currency and yields are well above 4%. So money is still going to flow towards treasury bonds. And to buy them, you obviously need dollars. So shorting it in this case isn't a smart idea either. And what we are seeing is a desperate Japan. No one believes their rate hikes will work. A big intervention might be coming and a lot of speculators are at risk of wipeout. But as always, let me know what you think. Will the Fed sacrifice inflation to save the US economy? And is a big dollar dump coming from Japan soon? Let me know in the comments below. Stay safe, be sure to smash the like button and subscribe as we navigate through these crazy times.